suffered as uh, far as far back as 2,000 years ago, and uh, so how does this kind of uh, meteorites form? How do the meteorites form? I believe that's one of the uh, uh, that may trigger people's curiosity. It's true that more and more people became curious about meteorites, but uh, uh, in general, people still have limited knowledge of the formation of meteorites. So what are meteorites? As far as 2,000 years ago, our ancestors already um, have uh, given an introduction, and it's Uh, it has already been identified in Shi in Shi Ji, uh, written by Sima Qian, and uh, has given its a uh, definition, has defined um, this meteorites as foreign objects or celestial objects that has entered the atmosphere and fall uh, falls on Earth. So there are three types of uh, uh, meteorites. Type one is uh, stony meteorites. Second is iron iron meteorites. Another is uh, stony iron meteorites, which is a mixture of uh, metals and uh, silicate. Meteorites are rare. However, we have already collected more than 60,000 pieces of meteorites. I think the actual number is larger than this because these 60,000 are registered meteorites, but many more are unregistered. So the actual number can even be higher than this. Most of these um, meteorites are stony um, meteorites or con chondrite, a chondrite uh, meteorites containing small um, round objects um, or round particles inside of it. This account for over 90% of uh, all the meteorites collections. There's something in common with all of these uh, um, meteorites here. They look uh, more rounded rather than angled. Is this because of uh, the frictions when uh, during the atmospheric entry? Yes, that's true. Most of these uh, meteorites are observed during their atmospheric entry. And once they are found, they are collected immediately. And they are very well protected since collection. Therefore, during the entry, you can see that because of the burning and friction, and a, a lot of these angles are evened. So when it falls from the sky, people may be able to observe it. And we also have video clips to show you the atmospheric entry. Some of the uh, videos are shot from uh, vehicle, uh, from vehicles. Some of them are shot from uh, uh, by uh, cell phones. And we can continue with our introduction. Uh, with uh, Professor Xu. This is a meteorite collected in Zhuncheng of Shandong province. It's quite lately collected with very uh, distinct features. As you can see, there are some dents at the surface. If uh, 
um, this kind of absorbed meteorites are um, stay on the Earth's surface for a long time before being collected. They will not be. Uh, they will not look like this. I think there will be more angles on the surface. So are all of these uh, meteorites named after the places where they were first found or collected? For example, this is called the Juancheng meteorites because it was collected in Juancheng. And this is a, a Jilin meteorite because it's found in Jilin. And they're also uh, in the shape of a heart, so it is normal. The naming of the object follows the international rules. It's very specific uh, uh, rules, set of rules, and you have to apply for it. And uh, before authorization, and we have to apply it to the International Meteorology Association uh, before determining its name. So basically, it um, it is named after the places where it is first observed or it first uh, um, falls down. This uh, meteorite was collected in one of the uh, meteorites uh, ring in Jilin province. So it is also named after the place. But uh, this kind of heart-shaped meteorite is quite rare. I also found that uh, it also have different categories. This is H5. And uh, so can you tell us more about uh, the classification? As I said, there are uh, thousands of meteorites, so uh, they have three basic categories, as I mentioned. But uh, but there are also some sub um, category. For example, there are uh, a chondrite, a chondrite, or chondrite meteorites, and there is also more detailed classification in these sub sub. Um, categories. This is H. H would stand for a certain con con um, a certain uh, containment of uh, metals. You can also see the number H5, for example. Uh, it stands for the um, the heat level that it withstood during the atmospheric entry. And so the higher a number is, the higher the temperature was. Um, if the temperature, is, if the number is seven, this means that the temperature is quite high. Well, those are very technical terms and knowledge that we have just heard. This meteorite looks quite beautiful. All it almost look as uh, one of the uh, candies or something that we ate normally. This was discovered in Argentina. This is a typical stony iron meteorite. And uh, it has a very high uh, containment of uh, silicate, and it's almost transparent. It can also be made into uh, into necklaces or decorations, but this is quite rare. I doubt that people would use this to make uh, to make use as an ornament. You can see that minerals, uh, half of them are stone, half of them are iron. 
So this kind of uh, meteorite usually originates from the very center of certain asteroids. So you only find this kind of mixture at the very center of certain stars or asteroids. Therefore, this is quite rare. Scientifically, this is very important. For example, if you're drilling from Earth's surface to collect such material, it will basically be impossible um, to draw to um, drill that deep. Therefore, this kind of uh, mixture is a natural it's a natural demonstration of such a mixture. This is quite rare, yes. Yes, this is a very precious um, collection that we have. It's one of uh, the uh, most expensive um, in the market. So we have uh, heard some of the general knowledge of meteorites. So can you tell us more about some of the red meteorites exhibited here? This is uh, um, was collected in 19. Uh, in April the 1st, 1952, in Lugoqiao area of Beijing, it was witnessed by many people, many local people. People did not know what it was, and some people even guessed that uh, it was uh, one of uh, the, um, the, the parachuters sent by the Kuomintang. So some of the um, local soldiers, they sent out troops to, uh, to find this object. And they ended up finding this. And they determined that this is a celestial object and is of some scientific value. Therefore, they mailed this object to uh, Zijingshan. Um, observatory and the observatory also sent back a congra a uh, thank you note in the second year in 1953 when Chairman Mao visited Nanjing at the Sun Yat-san um, tomb. The staff there introduced that we received a meteorite sample last year. So the chairman was quite impressed and asked to see this, after which the staff member presented this um, meteorite to Chairman Mao because he is a materialist. He uh, said that uh, all of these uh, universe was uh, cons uh, constitute of uh, meteorite uh, or, or materials. So this was uh, one of the uh, meteorites that was actually observed and praised um, and appreciated by the chairman. That's why it has a so-called red element to it. So what are the relations between these meteorites with uh, the um, um, seismic knowledge or knowledge about Earth? When we are studying geology, we mainly study the minerals, the stones on Earth. Some of the stones might be 
about uh, 30, uh, 3 to 4 billion years old. But you will see that there's no records of any of these stones that date so far back. Therefore, the study of uh, meteorites can be so helpful for us to study the history of Earth because it contains a lot of uh, information that will inspire us in our pursuit of learning the Earth's history. For example, what are the relations between atmosphere and water system? People are so used to it, but they are not with us all along. How do they form? Where do they come from? What are the resources? What are the sources? One of the probable causes or resource or sources for such uh, uh, for atmosphere and water is meteorites. So they are considered seeds of life on Earth. And they help us with the um, the revolution, uh, the evolution of uh, human race. So the human history actually has a lot of close relations with uh, meteorology. They are even older. Some of them are even older than our planet Earth. We still have different opinions when it comes to the um, lifespan of Earth. So we only determine um, the actual history of Earth, the lens of history in Earth by studying meteorites. And we determine that uh, the age of our planet Earth is around four. 0.5 billion years. That is the answer given to us by meteorites. Um, in our history book in Ming Dynasty, we see uh, records of uh, meteorites' rain. It was not until 1958 that people actually discover such uh, such meteorites because people use it to to make irons, but fails. Therefore, people send this to scientific institute, and the scientists then found that this is an irony. Uh, it's an iron. It's an iron meteorites. Words of a million, uh, words of hundreds of tones. One of our viewers is asking that when we are studying these meteorites, do we discover any trace of life? Not yet. However, we know that uh, all of the uh, life living objects subjects are organic uh, matters or form of organic matters. Some of the organic matters are asymmetrical. Some of it are symmetrical. So this kind of uh, symmetry is uh, the secret code to life. It is impossible for Earth to form its on itself this kind of a symmetric um, organic matter. So one of the theory is that life on Earth was brought about by meteorites because this kind of symmetrical organic matter are integrated by organic matters causing this nuclei, nucleoside. And then further transformed to 
uh, living objects, living things. So one of the theories that all life on Earth was brought about by meteorites. However, we are yet to discover any trace of uh, living uh, objects, any trace of life on these meteorites. I believe that we will be able to answer more of your questions as our understanding of uh, meteorites further develop. This is a moon meteorite. You can see a lot of dents on the surface. They are evidence of a collision of a Earth's of a moon surface, uh, of a collision between moon surface and other asteroids. And uh, uh, these dents are evidence of such collisions. It is also one of the debris of such collision. Uh, we saw another another uh, meteorite named after the revolutionary base Yan'an. This is a anchor droid meteorite. This was uh, very special because this is the first anchorite uh, meteor meteorite in mainland. It was discovered in Yan'an. And so far, the only anchorite meteorite in the mainland. Yet the Yan'an local people heard um, drums um, or this kind of uh, strange roaring sound and saw that something fall, fell into the ground. Therefore, the local people went there to see and discovered this meteorite. They, there are three meteorites, and this is one of them. So this kind of witnessed meteorites are quite rare because they are very diff difficult to uh, predict. That is true. When they enter the atmosphere, they are quite small objects. Therefore, they are witnessed by chance instead of by um, any kind of forecast. There is another meteorite, a very big piece called Alatai. It it is it weighs 1.4 tons. It is an iron, iron nickel meteorite. Because of its uh, um, formation, it is formed uh, mostly with iron nickel. Therefore, it is more solid than normally uh, than the stone and silicate uh, meteorite. And uh, it is uh, also less uh, likely to burst into smaller pieces. Therefore, most of uh, the iron meteorite are big. It was found in 1898 in Xinjiang Thomas region, Qinghe County. The original piece was 28 tons and was now observed, uh, preserved in the um, Geological Museum in Xinjiang. 
so this might be one of uh, the uh, meteorites, smaller object that falls from uh, the uh, the bigger the biggest piece. So in a course of uh, about a hundred years, we made several discoveries of the same falls, of the same fall. They were discovered in different places. Some of them are four to five hundred kilometers apart. So this is what we called a uh, meteorite falling belt. You can imagine that uh, this could be quite a uh, spectacle if you are there to see it. We have ever reason to believe that there are some still some other pieces that were yet to be that are yet to be discovered with such a large scale of meteorite falls. Today we also see some private collections. We call them uh, uh, meteorite hunters. These private collectors also have some uh, experiences to say. Today, uh, we see more and more people that have become interested in the collection of meteorites. They often send uh, samples or uh, pieces to scientific uh, uh, institute to do further research. I believe that there are a lot of collectors that among our viewers as well. Thank you so much, Professor Xu. And today we will invite one of the meteorite hunters in China, Mr. Zhang. Mr. Zhang Bo. So we heard that many of the collections were actually part of your private collections. So can you tell us more about this exhibition and your experience as a private collector of meteorites? Because earlier we have shot a video clip of uh, the zoom in um, of all of the collections. I think um, collecting meteorites is about finding your true self as well. I am a fan of uh, outdoor activities and uh, photograph uh, pho photography. So by chance, I witness a meteorite's ring, which triggered my interest of meteorites. So from that night on, I started my journey of collecting meteorites. This must be a very difficult uh, road, very difficult task for you. So what drives you, what drives you to do this for so many years? Is it because of sense of um, uh, sense of responsibility that you want more people to get to know meteorites? I've never I had never seen meteorites before, but once I began to um, collect meteorites. Um, I found that this is quite a interesting process, collecting and even 
uh, what we call hunting for meteorites. We also see some of the over uh, some of the collections are uh, sent back from overseas. That is true. People did not have a lot of interest in the past. So a lot of these uh, rare pieces were collected or bought from overseas collectors. Most of these collections were originally found in the Chinese soil, but were um, sent overseas. And uh, we can see more of these events in recent years because uh, our country is uh, becoming stronger. And it also showcases our comprehensive national strength. And the raise of international status and the improvement of people's livelihood. Therefore, I think that is our mission or responsibility to recollect or take back some of the meteorites that has been sent overseas. This meteorite is older than I am. It was uh, first f found in 1978 in Hunan, but uh, was uh, sent uh, was uh, bought by collectors uh, in the U.S. And last year, it finally was uh, recollected by Chinese uh, collectors. We believe that in the future, we can see more such um, stories happening in the future so that our local people can see more um, such rare pieces. We believe that uh, observatories at all localities will make it um, possible or more probable for such returns Because uh, in the past, uh, when I was little, nobody even told me about any stories of meteorites. Therefore, I have a reason to believe that uh, young people today, when they are curious, now they would uh, have a place. They will have a uh, place to learn such knowledge. They can go to the observatories at home. With the development of the construction of observatories, it will be a great location for students, for children to learn more about them. I believe that uh, all of the visitors here and our viewers now can have an opportunity to take a look at all of these meteorites. This surely is a rare opportunity. So thank you so much, Mr. Zhang, for bringing us your stories of with meteorites. And hopefully in the future we can see more of uh, uh, these collections. Beside the meteorites uh, collection, we also have a lot of other treasures to discover in the observatory. Next, we will have Mr. Dong Li Hua, uh, the director of uh, the Geological Museum. Hello, I'm Dong Li Hua. I'm uh, the director of uh, the Geological uh, Museum of uh, Zhejiang. So the Geological Museum uh, here is a very large museum. So can you tell us more about your collections and uh, um, the objects? We have a floor space of 12,000 square meters and uh, several exhibition halls.
uh, these are important materials in industrial and uh, they have a close connection with people's uh, livelihood and uh, industrial production. So all of these stones showcases the geological history of Earth. In this hall, um, we have uh, a lot of stones that are used as uh, one of uh, the um, uh, as the meteorites that can be used as the source of ink uh, for Asian people. This is uh, also known as uh, aragonite. In this museum, um, we would uh, have to do some uh, general um, generalization or uh, education on people. For example, this is uh, a uh, pyrite. You have to tell this from uh, what is normally known as the golden mines. This piece, this stone, can be used as making tofu, you may, which you may find it hard to believe. This is uh, also gypsum. It's totally natural. You can even see some pink color at the top. There's no uh, processing whatsoever since discovery. This originates from uh, piece originates from Australia, so you can see uh, the texture, and the layers. You can see uh, different uh, um, layers of uh, uh, sediments that are from different ages of Earth's history. So from this collection, we can know more about Earth's history. Uh, we have about uh, 12,000 pieces. This is what we call a desert rose, originates from Africa. And people would think that this uh, symbolizes love or uh, love stories. It must take a lot of effort to collect all of these objects for exhibition. Some of them are from private collectors. Some of our donations from these private collectors. And it takes decades for us to collect all of these objects thanks to all of our colleagues and friends in our field to have such a large collection. As an entrepreneur, we also want to make full use of such precious resources. For example, um, usually, for, uh, and also we need to make full use of the resources that we have. Only if we know fully know about these materials, you have a very uh, precious uh, collection here. It's the world's biggest uh, luminous pearl. 
People only know this from、uh, myths or、uh, mythical stories. They, some of them did not know this to be true. So can you more tell us more about this?、Uh, we discovered this in mineral bodies, and then we did、uh, some、uh, grindings. And then this is what we have got. We have invited expert to come here. You can see that、uh, this is、uh, the genie's record certificate. This is a certificate. So it is a round object of one point seven two meters in diameter. So when we are applying for the genie's、uh, record, they said that they have to pierce、uh, a hole through this、uh, object in order to determine its diameter. So the reason why they have to drill a hole is that people would understand. I mean, we, we misunderstood then that this might be a、um, an object that is made up by pieces. So the reason why they have to drill a hole is to convince people that this is a whole piece instead of a made instead of made up by different pieces. It's a diameter of 1.72 meters, and weighs eight tons. This is the biggest、uh, luminous pearl, according to the certificate. So it's called a luminous pearl for a reason. Yes. So. Is it really no, luminous after we turn off the light? Wow, I can really see that、uh, it is luminous, sending、um, out green、uh, lights on it. I don't know if you can see it. It is bright enough for us to,、um, for you to read your newspapers beside it. You can see how beautiful this piece is. It is really luminous at night. At this exhibition hall. Uh, we can see some uh, uh, collections of uh, dinosaur uh, skeletons. And dinosaur eggs. There are many types of uh, um, different kinds of、uh, dinosaur eggs. Some of them are in rectangular shape. Some of them are in round shape. So, as collectors, and you can see that is、uh, a whole collection. It's uh, uh, nested, probably by one dinosaur, which would be、uh, considered rare.
this is all was also uh, a return from overseas. So through very complex procedures, uh, we can make this kind of returns happen. These are were all were all previously found in China, but was lost overseas somehow, and then become uh, returns and uh, was returned to uh, its motherland. Uh, this is uh, a crinoid. One of the plants that were found in uh, in seas, in oceans. You can see that this kind of plants actually exist, have been existed for thousands of years. This is how it breathes with the opening and closing of its uh, flowers. So with the movement of the earth, it can be um, distorted into different uh, shapes. These are the roots of it, the plant. And uh, it also is evidence of the earth's uh, um, movement. So this kind of plate movement has made this possible. This is a very beautiful um, and rare. At this exhibition hall, we can see a lot of fossils. This is a fossil of a turtle. Uh, this is what we call a nanshong turtle, a tortoise. It's very well preserved. So this turtle is, you can see very clear the head of the tortoise. So how to pr prove that it has its head out? In this turtle's life, there it experienced a certain a sudden movement of the earth. You can see a very clear dent here. That is because of the collision or falling of a, a stone. So it experienced a sudden death. Even it had no time to um, shrink its head back into its shell. There is, there was a heavy hit on its shell, causing a dent, as we see. And uh, it uh, dies with its head out. It also has legs. And these are dinosaur eggs, actually. So probably this um, tortoise is trying to steal and to eat and the dinosaur eggs. 
So when it was trying to steal the uh, dinosaur eggs, there is sudden movement of the earth, and uh, which it, which killed it. This is another very precious uh, piece of our museum. It has 11 small dinosaurs in it. Can you help us count? So can we see them all? There are 11 dinosaurs. You can see at the abdomen of this dinosaur has eight. There are two at the head. So why do these fish appear at the head? And it's also because of the earth movement, of the plate movement. It is because of the pressure that exerted on the earth's shell. And uh, this uh, mumfish was pressed very hard, and it killed the mom and the babies. Therefore, this was this is very rare piece of uh, um, fossils. We saw a lot of uh, rare collections. I believe that uh, during our tour, our viewers can know more about the geological history, the Earth's movement. From the study of these fossils, we can also learn more about the weather, the geological movement thousands or millions of years ago. Thank you so much, Mr. Dong, for being with us. I believe that during our live stream, not only do we see objects from uh, celestial space, these foreign visitors from sky, but also through the induction of the director we have known more about uh, the um, objects on Earth. I believe that through such an exhibition, we can know more about the Earth, respect the Earth, respect the nature, and uh, furthermore, protect the Earth and nature. Thank you so much for being with us. That's it for today's live stream.